is Loji, and welcome to part five of this small arpeggio power-up. If you enjoy this type of instruction and material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below for my entire guitar method. Now let's get on to the lesson. All right, today we finally finish the loop of this B section, which will then finish the loop of the entire power-up. After today's video, you will have all the information, all of the notes, all of the chords you need to play the entire thing. But first, we need to do a quick recap on what we did in the previous videos so you can see how this loop is finally connected. So from the beginning of the B section, okay, we come from that little chromatic thing. <laughs> Bam, that starts the B section. The whole thing sounds like this. This part right here was from part three. Then we come down this E minor. This is what we did in part four. This is back to the beginning of the loop, but with the variation coming down this D major instead of that one. Now we're back to the same. Now this is where we ended all of the videos so far, or at least the previous tracks, and this is where we're going to pick it up today. It's going to come down virtually the same thing as what we did in the previous one, coming down E minor, coming down the same little figure with that passing tone into B minor, right? However you want to do it. I've been messing around with that one in between these videos, and I kind of like it. Either way, so after you do that B minor, right? Remember what we were doing before. We were playing a little four note scale that sounded like this. And then what do we do? Come down. All of those connected sounds to the F sharp seven, that F sharp augmented, another one, and then the upper fret diminished, all of that stuff. But we're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna play something else to put us back to the very beginning of the entire power, back to B flat, the original key. How are we going to do that? The notes, instead of this scale, this is the trickiest part, by the way. Instead of that, what we are doing is this. So the shape, instead of D, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, it's D, E, F sharp, a, and then we come down an E flat major seven arpeggio. Because this is a straight up arpeggio and these are very simple figures, there are a lot of fingerings to, to play to get this part down. So I'll show you what I'm doing, but there are a ton of different ways you can do it. Experiment with what makes the most sense to you. What I'm doing is maybe it's not the best one and I'll tell you why in a second, but let me just go over exactly how I'm doing this. Again, instead of this, I'm doing this. So what am I playing? D, E, F sharp, I'm playing the A here, and then I'm coming down E flat major seven arpeggio, vanilla, nothing different about it, just in groups of four. So that looks like this. Very, very simple figure, nothing crazy about it. How am I looking at the notes? That's my root, I'm playing three, one, seven, five. That's my first group of four. Right, next group of four, one, seven, five, three. Next group of four, seven, five, three, one. Next group of four, five, three, one, seven, one. And then we end there. I'll do that whole thing. One more time slow. Now remember, there are a ton of different ways to do this, right? The way I'm doing it like this, I'm doing that. I'm doing it like that because it's comfortable for my right hand. I can just go pick, pull off, and then upstroke, follow through. Very easy to do with economy picking. But you can also do this. If for some reason this is more comfortable for you, that's three, one, seven, five. Check it out. Three, one, and seven on the same string, and then five, as opposed to playing three and one on the same string, and then seven on a different one. Right? Notice how these two are the same thing. Right? Three, one, seven, five. Three, one, seven, five. Completely up to you. In reality, this one is probably the one that makes the most sense because it keeps you in this position. Remember where we're coming from. That's what we were doing before. Now we're doing this. And coming down like this seems to be the one that makes the most sense. That would look like this if I played this altered fingering right here. Right? D, E, F sharp, A, hit the E flat major seven. something like that, that would probably be the better fingering because it keeps you in this position. And then, of course, other ones you could do too. But I'm choosing to do this one 
Mm-hmm. I don't really know why. I think I like being in this position for the entire thing instead of being here and then eventually coming down. I'm just jumping to that to that back to Fret's position right off the bat. But the problem is it this is, was throwing me at like every time I did this, which is why I'm questioning my fingering. To come from this is what we've been doing this whole time, right? To come from this. That's what we were doing earlier, right? That was that little four note sequence getting into the augmented chords, blah, blah, blah. But now, in order to do this second variation, what is it? And I'm not playing it right here, though. I'm playing it here, which notice what I have to do. In order to do this fingering, my pointer finger needs to be able to hit the A right here because I'm choosing to move back here. So what happened many times is exactly this when I was running this track. I would memorize, of course, this fingering of the previous run, But this fingering doesn't work if I need my pointer finger to be here. Instead, what I need to do, instead of pointer ring, which is what the original one was, I need to do pointer pinky right there because that then, excuse me, that allows me to play pointer pinky middle pointer and then I'm set up. I can't tell you how many times me just forgetting to put that pinky down to get into this final section, I would just do what my muscle memory told me, pointer ring, immediately I was screwed up, right? Because I can't, I mean... I can do that. That's a little weird for me. Pointer ring middle pointer as opposed to pointer pinky middle pointer. That sets me up perfectly, whereas this one's a little awkward. I can't tell you how many times I ran it, and every time I got to that moment, I screwed up because my hand was still thinking the first repetition and not the second one, right? So again, that's a lot of... As I run through the whole thing, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, but let me just go through the parts one more time. We're coming from this E flat, or excuse me, E minor. Normal normal but watch this instead of pointer ring to continue the previous run of it we're now going pointer pinky to jump into the fingering i'm using pointer pinky middle pointer and that's d e f sharp a and that puts us in position to play this e flat major arpeggio major seven, I should say. So that's E flat major seven coming down groups of four, starting from the th- excuse me, from the three. And I'm doing this. You could of course do this. If you did that, the fingering getting into it would be a lot easier. You could go right, whatever, but I'm choosing not to do that. My fingering. Now watch this. When we get to this final E flat right here, instead of playing E flat major, we play E flat minor, right? The minor six. And that figure is this. then look at what note we end on. That is the third of B flat, the beginning of the entire power up. And that's where everything will start over. Let me go over that E flat minor. So again, starting on the pointer finger. So this is again, a little pattern, just running through the shapes or running through the notes. This is one flat three on the same string, five natural six, one on the same string right there. So one flat three, then five natural six, one. After we get that root right there, a little tricky to play. You have to stretch a little bit. Dipping down to the five right here, playing the two right there. So that's one, five, six, one, two, kind of creating this sound of minor six, nine sort of chord. Nice sound. After I hit the two, go back down to the six, which is right here. Right? Two, six, one, two, flat three. Come down what feels like a little, little figure like that. Flat three, two, one, five, and then the D, which is back to B flat. And how does that work? We're coming from B flat major seven, B flat, or sorry, E flat major seven, E flat minor, minor six, right? This sort of sound, which allows us to resolve back to B flat. That is what's called a minor four, one of the most classic progressions of all time. That's what we're doing. That's what we're playing right there. E flat is acting as the four chord of the chord we're going to. E flat minor acts as the minor four of the chord we're going to, and then finally B flat. Uh, one of the most common sounds you hear it constantly when people want to go back to a one chord. Let me play all of that coming from the E flat major seven with the fingering that I'm using. Pinky right here on its third. That's our root. That's the third. Coming down like this. If you're wondering what I'm doing with my right hand, I'm kind of just picking, you know, using a little bit of of economy picking when I can, doing um, pull-offs whenever possible, right? Just kind of use your intuition. Then coming up here, notice 
See that slide? Root seven, root with the pointer finger. That allows me to get into this next shape. start back at the beginning. How you want to do that fingering wise, it's kind of up to you, but I'll run it one more time. E flat minor again. First shape, one, three, five, excuse me, flat three. One, flat three, five, six, one, five, six, one, two, six, one, two, flat three, come down, flat three, two, five, excuse me, flat three, two, one, five, and then A on this on this D. You can kind of think about it as it starts out as a group of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then once I hit this, it's groups of four. So watch this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. Now how you end, nat naturally I'm ending like that because it feels comfortable. And I think I am doing that in, in the playthrough. I think I do that and then start the next part. Because remember, this final note, um, that's the beginning of the entire power-up. So if you want to get yourself set up to loop the entire thing, maybe ending on the pointer finger might, might, excuse me, might not be the best choice because then you have to slide back immediately. It's still cool, though. It sounds kind of nice. But instead, maybe do something like that. Watch my fingering. Middle, pointer, pinky, ring, and then you start with the middle finger which is a little bit easier to ease back into that part one. Again, I'm gonna leave the fingering up to you once you get the notes. And you start the whole thing over. Let me recap all of this so you have all of the notes and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do for the track. So coming down the E minor, same as we've been doing, right? Variation, watch my fingering. Pointer pinky sets me up to do this. time slow without talking. I can't tell you how many times I screwed that up in the main playthrough by not getting that fingering change to put me into that next position. I would always head into it just like this and then do this because I was so used to doing the previous part. Fingering for that is perfect, but not for this ending. If I did pointer ring, I almost immediately had to stop and start over because it needs to be pointer pinky to shove my hand back this way. Excuse me. To get that final part. So, right. So what we're going to do for this final track, we're going to do another track later and we'll talk about what that's going to be. But for this first track, we're going to run exactly that, right? Coming from E minor, same E minor we were doing before. Same little walk into the B minor with that passing tone. Mess around with the fingering if you want. Now watch this pointer pinky to get us in position. E flat minor. Bam, we'll end there, restart. So on and so forth. That's going to be what this track is. Again, there's a lot of different ways to do this exact part with changing the fingering. I'm going to leave that up to you. You can try the fingering I'm using. It works well with my technique because my technique is mostly like a lot of economy picking, a lot of using picking fingers like this move right here that I was complaining about earlier. That's pointer, pinky, middle pointer, D, E, F sharp, A. I'm using pick and then middle finger, ring finger. I'm going pick, hammer on, middle finger, ring finger. Again, that might be really awkward for you if you're not doing techniques like that, or you're not doing like any kind of um, economy picking or sweet picking or whatever. If you're a better alternate picker, then maybe doing it like this is better for you instead of doing this, because then you can come down right here, right, et cetera. So I'll leave that up to you to figure out the fingering. Just whatever you do, have a fingering that you like that's, that is comfortable and also very consistent. So every time you run it, you're doing the same thing. So with all that in mind, let's get on to this first backing track.
right, if you could play over that backing track, you now have all of the information you need to run this B section in its entirety. So what we're going to do is start what we did in part three and play everything up to what we did today. Parts one and two, that B flat major, C minor, kind of connected shapes moving through those inversions. The first section, the A section, we will do in the final video, but for now we're just going to do this B section, which we started in part three. That was all of those connecting chords, right? D major, leading into G major, leading into F sharp, then B minor, then B7, then E minor, all of that stuff. We're gonna run all of that in its entirety right now. So I'm gonna play all of those shapes and kind of walk you through what we're doing. This is what we did in part three, starting from this D major right here. This is what we did in part four, coming down E minor. Augmented, diminished. This is back to the beginning, but with the variation D major, coming down like this. This is what we did today from this E minor with the variation at the end. Change the fingering. That is the beginning of the entire power up, the starting note of the A section, the B flat major, right? Which we will do in the final video. So one more time, this backing track, the entire B section, start to finish. I'll play it one more time slowly without talking. That's the end, again, right back to the beginning. Main thing to keep in mind here is we are playing both versions where the first time we do the E minor, and then we walk this figure into the augmented chords, right? Which we can do pointer ring, which sets us up. But the next time you play it, remember, pointer pinky because you need to get set up for those E flat chords. That is the thing that always messed me up, so make sure it doesn't mess you up also. So let's get on to this final track. That's it for part five of this small arpeggio power-up. As usual, if you enjoy this type of instructional material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below for my entire guitar method. See you all in the final part. <laughs>